this is what a lot of people get mixed up when I okay. talk about this. They'll say, oh, what's the, you know, what's the gene for infidelity? Yeah. And it, it, it comes from high school biology where we all got this kind of, you know, this gene causes blue eyes, this gene causes green mm -hmm. eyes, da, 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 da. And it's like, mm, okay, well, uh, first, it, it's, it, it doesn't even work quite that way for eye color, but it certainly doesn't work that way for behavior. I'm not saying there's not a genetic component. The mm -hmm. genetic component is actually very large. In yeah. some samples, genetics counts for most of the accounts for the most of the variation in male infidelity mm -hmm. and a large minority of the variation in female infidelity. So genes are very important here. But it wouldn't be one gene and it wouldn't be four infidelity. So it's really hundreds of genes that contribute small little effects to the likelihood of the behavior. So okay. you might have a couple genes that make you more or less likely to take risks. I right? see. Okay. Um, and so that gene those genes, right, they're making tiny contributions to your risk-taking propensity, mm -hmm. and that's spilling over and having a predictive effect on infidelity. There might be a suite of genes that determines your interest in sexual variety right. Right? or your ability to be duplicitous. Right? There, mm -hmm. there, there might be genes that have tiny effects on those personality characteristics mm -hmm. that, in aggregate, end up contributing a lot to your risk of infidelity. But again, you know, are genetics important in terms of explaining human variation? Absolutely. But culture how you were raised. So you think it's a little contributes. more nurture versus the actual nature that would actually, you know, if if a father is cheating and the son knows about it. I would say it's more, I would say it's more the genetic side, but the, just based on existing evidence for men specifically, mm -hmm. I would say it's more on the genetic side. Yeah. But I'm also not discounting the fact that the father could have an influence just socially. And I'm also not discounting the fact that Friends could have an influence, right? So this is kind of sure, the, sure. this is something that Robert Plowman, the, the the famous geneticist, calls the the nature of nurture, mm -hmm. right? Which is that your genes might have a small impact on who you're likely to become friends with, and then those friends could have an impact on who you're likely to become. So we do see a correlation where people whose friends like to have affairs tend to also like to have affairs themselves. Is there evidence that even if the child knows nothing about the parent's infidelity, that they could still, in fact, cheat because yes. of the genes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so. and, and that, that's actually most of the evidence is that format. And the reason most of the evidence is that format is because we know about the, the, way, the way genetic influences are studied mm -hmm. are through twin studies. So you look uh, at, if you want to go into the science, it's like you look at fraternal twins mm -hmm. who share 50% of their DNA. And then you look at identical twins who share 100% of their DNA. Mm -hmm. And if they were both raised in the same household, they both have the same or very similar environment, let's say, mm -hmm. same parents at the very least. What's the difference in relative likelihood of similar behavior that comes with fraternal versus identical? Mm -hmm. And that you can place on genes because that's the, that's the, that's the difference in that case. Or, or you can estimate that maybe that's, that's the genetic side of things. And look, what we see is that identical twins behave more similarly than fraternal twins. And then we also have these right. candidate gene studies where kind of what you're talking about, where you identify a gene and then you try to calculate its relative effects mm -hmm. on the probability of a person being involved in the behavior. And we do have some candidate genes where it's like, oh, okay, it looks like this one gene does seem to have an, a significant but small effect on a person's likelihood of committing infidelity. And if mm -hmm. they have that gene, they're more likely to. But I, I would encourage people at home who kind of think that I'm talking about some kind of weird Galactica style <laughs> strangeness. It's, it's like, how could genetics not have effects sure. on behavior? So genes code for proteins and regulatory molecules, uh, then those proteins and regulatory molecules build and operate your brain. Mm -hmm. So how could genes not impact your brain? They just do. And then how could your brain not impact your behavior? If we know anything about behavior, it's mm -hmm. influenced largely by the brain. And so a lot of people, they get uncomfortable when they hear that, when they hear about the findings of behavior genetics, and so they want to argue with them out of personal discomfort or their political background. Right. They, they find it politically distasteful mm -hmm. or they're scared of it. They're scared that it might lead to some worse ideas. But all of that kind of falls by the wayside when you actually first look at the studies, which are very compelling. Um, and then also, second, just think about it logically. How could genes have no impact on behavior? Right. And that's what we see is that genes have impact on the, the gene, everything is heritable to some extent. Right. And sometimes these heritability effects are very confusing. Right? So sometimes opponents to behavior genetics will say, oh, well, this study showed that like the weather is heritable, right? Mm -hmm. The weather in your environment. Mm -hmm. And they'll use that to mock behavior genetics. And it's like, okay, well, think about it a little more clearly. You can choose where you live. And so some people are going to have a genetic predisposition to being more likely to choose yeah. to live somewhere sunny.
right? right? And then also there's going to be a second genetic impact on like people's memory isn't perfect, their perception of what the weather is. So uh, so a, a lot point. of this comes from, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, thank you, but it, but it really does come from behavior geneticists. I'm not yeah. a behavior geneticist. I'm, no. I'm, I'm repeating the work of them, which, which has certainly been influential in my thinking. And it's also, it's controversial to some, but from a scientific perspective, I'd, I'd say, I'd say it's very sound. Um, yeah. that genetics has at least some impact on most behaviors, including infidelity. That's, it's, yeah. It might be an upsetting one, but, but it is true.